When it comes to investing, many beginners wonder how many stocks they should buy. The answer is that depends. Goodbye. No, really, it depends. If you're just starting out, you can start with one. Generally speaking, the more money you have available to invest in stocks, the better diversified your portfolio can be. The average number of stocks for retail investors is 10 to 12. Of course, some just have several companies, some will have 20 to 30. So 10 to 12 is a good number that intermediate investors can manage. However, if you're just starting out and you don't know what you're doing, the answer is one. <laughs> If you're a first-time investor, one of the best things to look at is to invest in the whole market. The S&P 500 tracks the 500 biggest companies in the US. So an index fund like the SPY is a simple, cheap way to invest in all of them. This gives you great diversification and a very good risk to reward ratio. Of course, some years it will fall, like in 2022, it fell by 20%, but historically the US market just keeps going up. It's a great investment, not just for beginners, but for all kinds of people that don't want to spend time managing their portfolio. If you really love a company, and for many people, Apple was their first stock because it's cool and it's the largest corporation in the world. To be fair, any of the top 10 companies by market cap, if you had invested in any of them 10 years ago, you can see how much you would have had by now. But individual companies are more risky. There's no reason to just add stocks to have more stocks. But if you already have one, then the logical answer is two. How do you go about it? For beginners, it's smart to put 80% in an index fund and 20% in one or more stocks. So you can use 20% of your investment money to buy a company and see how it goes. Because of fractional shares, you don't have to buy whole shares anymore, so it doesn't matter how much a single share actually costs. You can use any amount of money. So say you have $1,000, keep 80% of that 800 in an index fund and buy a big blue chip company like Apple with 200 and you're done. Congrats, you have an investment portfolio. The more you learn, the more you find out about the market, you might want to find some other companies you want to buy. So then the answer is anything between three to 10. Even if you start adding more stocks, for beginners it's smart to keep most of your funds in the S&P 500 and then invest five, 10, 15% in two, three, five, up to 10 companies maximum. This way, you'll have a systematic and stable instrument, the S&P, with stable returns and time to learn about new companies and understand how to invest in them without taking on too much risk. And you can even break up that 20% and invest equal amounts in a number of companies. You don't have to invest in 10 all at once, but you can do it gradually. That way you can spend a week or a month looking at the market, researching different companies and choose the one that looks the most promising. So say you want to invest a thousand in 10 stocks. Buy one stock with a hundred, say Apple, you have 900 left, then take some time to discover a new company, use another hundred to buy Google or something, then you add Microsoft and so on. This way, by investing in different companies gradually, you improve your understanding of the different businesses and the market as a whole. And you don't have to invest the whole amount at once. But even if you add more companies, you can still avoid exceeding that 20%. Then you won't get such big returns from individual companies, but your risk will be low so you won't make as many mistakes. But there's no need just to have more stocks for the sake of it. You might actually do worse than having the S&P 500. And actually, 97% of actively managed funds underperform the S&P 500, even if professional fund managers are doing it. A good reason to add more companies if you want to add a specific industry that you think will grow, like the market was down in 2022, but energy, defense, oil stocks went up, you don't have to invest in oil companies if you don't want to. But it's just an example how even if the market is falling, usually something is growing. You can research those trends and see which sectors are currently growing. Maybe you want to invest in a Chinese company or other emerging markets. The more stocks you have, the harder it is to manage them. It's harder to control this process. That way you have more homework. You have to keep an eye on earnings calls and analyze the results of a company's work. So coming back to smaller numbers of companies, you can invest in one, two or three if you're absolutely certain those companies will do well. But the risk of something going wrong is much higher. If you have some idea about things you want to invest in, but don't want to manage your portfolio actively, then thematic trading fractional collections or TTFs from Gainey help to diversify easily, but have the same flexibility in choosing what you want to invest in, what you want in your portfolio, unlike the S&P 500, which you don't control at all. 
but you'll still be investing in 10 to 15 companies because TTFs are smaller than sector ETFs. They are more dynamic, they're automatically rebalanced. Uh, you, it'll be easy for you to get to know these companies, unlike with an ETF where you have dozens or hundreds of stocks. Investing in individual stocks is actually pretty risky for beginners. It's best to know what you're doing. If you download Gainy, you'll see stock recommendations that take into account your interest and risk profile and see how much they fit you before you decide what you like. So hopefully this has been helpful. All the best with your investments. See you soon.